I, I wanted to ask you about uh, like um, the protests that we're seeing right now at, at the aftermath of the, the George Floyd uh, murder and and Black Lives Matter and, and defund the police. Um, what we're seeing, I think, is is a lot of energy, and I'm not sure if it's because like either I'm not aware of it or the ma the mainstream media isn't reporting it, and so it doesn't kind of have that ele elevation. Um, but there there has to be when there is this great energy, particularly with protests, which are pretty central in democracy. We're like the part of being in a free democracy is that we are allowed to get in the streets and, and protest. Um, and make our issues known uh, to to the decision makers, um, and usually it's reached a point where nothing else has worked. Do you think Issue Voter would be able to kind of synergize with the energy that could be out in the streets that would then get channeled into more specific or concrete policy asks or demands, and then be able to track that? Yeah, absolutely. So we did do that. We um, we sent out bill alerts related to law enforcement related legislation. And the really interesting thing I think to note is that none of these pieces of legislation were new. It wasn't something reactionary. Lawmakers are already had considered these things. It's just that people don't always know that. So for example, there was already a bill in Congress to demilitarize police. There was already a bill in Congress to re require de-escalation training and um, action. I know that many I know there's a wide range of initiatives and some people would say they're not for those things and some people would, would say those things don't go far enough. But those are just two examples of legislation that already existed. Uh, and so being able to send that out and let people know and send their opinions is definitely something we can do. And to your point, I think there's this question of what happens after the protest, right? Protest alone it does not result in policy change, right? Like. It, it can create uh, awareness. It can create, um, I don't know, like, like I think protest has to be a part of a longer term strategy if it's really going to make longer term change. And it has to be a bit of a, you know, sustained effort with leaders that are moving it forward um, as opposed to kind of like a one time action that people do take. So I do think where issue voter comes in is we can help sustain making the act of making people's voices heard between elections, you know, beyond the protest. Uh, and I do believe that for any policy change that happens, there are a number of factors. I don't think that any one organization can take credit for a policy passing or not passing. Cause I see that happening a lot too, which I think is very frustrating. So you'll see, um, I mean, perfect example, and one of my pet peeves is petitions. So perfect example is, you know, there were lots of petitions around in 2017 about the health care bill in the U.S. And then when the health care bill didn't pass, every single organization that had sent out a petition basically sent out an email that said, oh, it was because of us. <laughs> but it was not just because of them, right? It was because of a lot of different actions and a lot of different factors. Um, it's never going to be just like, in my opinion, it's never just going to be one person or one organization. Even in, you know, some of the big movements in history, there might be a figurehead or there might be certain names and things that people recognize, but it's never just them, right? That are, that's working to make the change happen. Yeah, so definitely, I think is a piece of that. And I would never, I would, similarly, I would never claim it, the credit for something. You know, I wouldn't say, oh, it's because of issue voter that this, you know, thing happened. Um, I think it's a piece of it for sure, but it's not the only thing. Uh, petitions, I'll just mention real quick because it is a pet peeve. Maybe I can just mention why petitions are my pet peeve. Um, we have the floor, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> petitions are my pet peeve because they're used for list building and people don't necessarily know that. So I do think that they can be effective for local issues and for petitioning companies. In certain contexts, they can work, but they are not effective for federal policy change. They are for list building. So when you sign a petition, that's like the marketing funnel. It's like, that's the easiest thing for someone to get you to do is like get riled up and sign this petition. And then you ha they have your email and then they, what they want your email because they want to send you uh, more information. They want to get you to do other actions eventually, which might actually be more impactful. But step one is like, get them to sign the petition, collect an email address. And then they can use that email to, yeah, send more information, um, ask for donations, do a bunch of other things. And there's nothing, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like there's nothing wrong with organizations wanting to build their lists. There's nothing, nothing really wrong with organizations asking for money. 
But the problem is they do it under this, I think, like, you know, disguise of a petition, which uh, makes people feel good. It makes people feel like, oh, I did something and I took this action about this issue I care about. But I don't think people, I don't think everybody realizes that that petition is going to be ignored. It's not actually going to have an impact. I mean, I see all these petitions that are like, petition Nancy Pelosi, petition Mitch McConnell. If you're not Nancy Pelosi or Mitch McConnell's constituent, why are you petitioning them?